Our main goal in Panther Primer is to connect you, the fans, to this current edition of the men's hockey team. But at the same time, we also want to reach out to some former Panthers, some who are still playing pro, and those who have fully retired from the game. Today's guest was an offensive force during his four-year career here at UPEI. The original voice of the Panthers and current Premier PEI, Denny King, dubbed him the magic man because of his offensive creativity. And he's creating quite a story in his home province of Newfoundland with the hometown growlers. Please welcome St. John's native and former UPEI forward, Marcus Power. So here he is, fresh from a five game swing through the Northeastern United States. Marcus Power, good to have you on the set, buddy. Great to be here. Good to see you again. All right. So listen, Pow, uh, let's get right to the first question. Uh, you, you came here from a uh, pretty good season to ruin Aranda, 109 point season in your last year. You came here to UPEI. Um, you put up some pretty good numbers over your time, but. If you look back in the four years, what kind of memories do you have or what sticks out for you in terms of your time spent here in the island? Uh, I definitely think one of the biggest thing, things that sticks out is like the friendships that you make and the guys you still talk to. I think that's number one. My time at school was great on and off the ice. I enjoyed both aspects of that. And mm -hmm. UPI is a great place to play. and It's also a great place to live. And there's a lot of really nice people there. And being from Newfoundland, it's kind of a small knit province as well so it was it was a great fit for me and uh when i played in junior connor cameron who was from pei was one of the main reasons why i decided to go to upei and then i met forbes and everything and they were able to offer me a great package and then guys like darcy ashley and brent andrews getting to know them uh, was great and they were another reason why i decided to go to upei good you've been back since uh, i was actually back this summer i went back this summer and uh did a bit of golfing with Brent and Darcy and got to see guys like uh, Ryan McKinnon, Connor Wilkinson. And uh, it was great seeing those guys again, especially after COVID and everything. And cool. getting back to a PEI summer was nice compared to what it can be like in Newfoundland at times. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> well, now, listen, uh, you, you have your own memories of your time spent here in the island. And, of course, I have good memories of watching you. But there's one memory that kind of sticks out a little bit more than others for me. And... Maybe I'll have a little listen here as to what kind of sticks out for me. Andrews, Shamitz is all over him, though. Andrew sidesteps him, drags it up to the skate to the stick. Still going, back to the point. Armstrong tees it up, shot, save, rebound. Goal! <laughs> 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 All right, that was the somewhat muted, non-partisan call of UPEI play-by-play -play announcer Dennis King. You remember that one? Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty funny to hear and uh, to see that little clip. I think Brent would take a lot of uh, credit for doing the dirty work there. and I got rewarded with the goal, but that was definitely <laughs> a good memory. And hearing you and Denny uh, call that was awesome. Well, we kind of lost it. We were... Uh... That was a pretty big moment for the team, right? Though I mean, that pushed us into the semifinals for the first time, and uh, it was certainly a, a, a lot of fun. And uh, we we got swept away with it, but that's okay too. Yeah, it was a pretty funny nickname Danny created, and obviously he's doing great things now in PEI. And for sure. that was a great moment, and something I one of the things that definitely stick out for me as well my time playing in the UPI hockey. Nice. So, Pal, you, you moved on to become a, you know, a pro playing in your hometown province in Newfoundland, uh, uh, Labrador. Uh, and the team cashed in immediately with some pretty good success winning the Kelly Cup, right? Especially, I think it was the first team since the 90s, maybe, that won the uh, first fran expansion franchise to win the, uh, the, the ECHL championship. And but what did that mean for you as a local boy being on a – a team like that yeah that was pretty crazy you know my first season playing pro hockey to win the championship was it was pretty pretty surreal and we had a great team the Leafs kind of used their East Coast affiliate as actual development 
tool, which some other teams don't do. They kind of see it as like triple A baseball and stuff. Like they actually get their young guys down here on NHL deals or AHL prospects and like to give them a lot of ice time instead of them sitting on the bench at the American League level. So I think guys like myself and Zach and James and Adam Hardy from Newfoundland, we really benefited from that, playing with good players. And Ryan Klo, who's also from Newfoundland, started out as the head coach, and he just instilled a winning culture from day one. And I think even when he was had to step down, we just kept that going. And we just had such a close-knit group of guys, and with that winning culture, it was crazy what we could do. And like you said, winning at home was – was something I never dreamed of going to watch games as, as a kid, watching the foul goals and stuff at mile one and then being on the ice winning a professional championship was something you can only dream of. Sure. And the Newfoundland fans don't get behind it at all, do they? <laughs> you got a lot of big hockey fans here. They might at times not be the loudest, but they're really following the game and they're like yeah. they really they're really the loudest when you make a good hockey play and stuff like that, because they really know the sport. So yeah. They really got behind us during the playoffs and when we won, it was the loudest I've ever heard mile one, so it was great. Nice. So uh, this year you're into year uh, three, of course, year two got cut off by COVID um, and the team's rolling once again. Uh, you've fallen into a bit of a leadership role this year. You've taken on a, an A with the team. Uh, what's that done for you personally and as a player? Yeah, it was definitely different being one of the older guys that's and I guess my fourth year pro now, so crazy to think about. It's gone pretty quick. But, yeah, you got a lot of guys coming out of junior or school where, like, pro hockey is just completely different. I don't really know how you can describe it until you really start to play it. The speed and the execution level and having to bring it night in, night out is probably the hardest thing. And knowing what it takes to win, I think that was one of the main reasons why Coach Wellwood made us four guys that were on the team when we won and were from Newfoundland, part of the leadership group. And, Nice. We've had a great start to the season, and guys are, are really liking it here and really liking us. And we're the type of leaders, I guess, where like you're not really hard on the guys; you're more just there to talk and through stuff and it's have tough. a good time. But it's it's, it's good, and uh, we're really enjoying it so far. We got another great team. Good. So uh, speaking of that success, you guys are in first. Uh, you, I know you just come off a five game road sweep through the northern uh, through the states. Uh, you get a seven game winning streak. Do we sense another championship coming this way, or is that a little too early to, to count on? I think it's definitely something that's that we want to happen, and with this good of a start, it's pretty hard not to say that it's not in our sights. So yeah. we got a really good team. We're playing really offensive structure, and we got a lot of puck moving defensemen, which is the new up-and-coming thing in the NHL and in, in hockey in general. So I think a lot of teams are having trouble with how fast we are and how mobile our defensemen are. And it's almost like we got five fours on the ice at times. And then we have great goaltending. And like I said, there's lots of Leafs prospects that are down playing with us yet again this year. And they have lots of guys in AHL contracts because they have just so much money and they really care about their development. So it, it really helps us being part of the Growlers when the Leafs really do care about you like that. So it's been good. And I think we definitely got another team that can compete for – the Kelly Cobb. Nice. So, Powell, one of the things that you and I would often talk about, we both share a, a mutual love of music. Uh, <laughs> oftentimes they would be discussed over late hours and alumni night and things like that. But uh, what's on your playlist these days, buddy? Who are you into? Uh, me and some of my close buddies actually kind of got into Oasis over the last year or more. And oh, nice. that was a band, I think, when, when me and you used to enjoy music and stuff, I never really brought them up. So yeah. that's definitely one that I've really started to like and getting away from some of their normal popular songs like Supernova and Wonderwall. I'm really listening mm -hmm. to some of the ones that are kind of not that mainstream and popular. And we really started to like them and, and play them at get-togethers and in the dressing room at workouts and stuff. So it was good. I have to check it out. Where'd that love of music come from anyway? I think, honestly, long bus rides in Rouen or Anda. Because you got a lot of time where you're either after a loss or after a win. You're living on the bus, so there's a lot of time when I'd just be listening to so much music. And through that, I got a lot of variety and know a lot of different songs and stuff that a lot of people wouldn't. And then you were able to name a few, and I would name some. We kind of hit it off, I guess. A lot of Bruce Springsteen ones like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I kind of know him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
So listen, buddy, one of the things I asked uh, uh, Jordan uh, Mayer and, uh, and Jesse Sutton about when uh, in a previous Panther Primer was their love of ball hockey, which is alive and kicking in Newfoundland. And I know that you play it, Zach O'Brien plays it as well too. Like, where does that come from? Like, where? What's? Uh, it seems that it's really more popular in Newfoundland than it is elsewhere in other parts of uh, even Canada, anywhere in Canada. Yeah, I think mainly it's because we just played so much street hockey as kids in Newfoundland. Mm-hmm. You play that with your buddies, usually playing ice hockey with those same guys. Mm-hmm. So then that just turned into almost playing ball hockey every single summer together. And that was one thing when – some of us would go play major junior or into university or into pro now that a lot of our other close friends weren't able to do. So I think playing ball hockey was a way you could still play with a lot of your close friends. And then on top of that, you can just stay in great shape for, for yeah. hockey season. And you get to travel with team Newfoundland. We've gotten to travel to six provinces, I think now and did well at those. And it's been great getting to play sport like that with your buddies and then obviously getting to travel. So I think that's probably the main thing. A lot of my real close friends are on these ball hockey teams. And like you said, Zach and, and me, it's kind of where we started playing together and getting our chemistry was through ball hockey, which is pretty crazy to think about. So um, I, I love ball hockey, always will, and it's something that I'll probably play for the rest of my life. Awesome. So, pal, uh, last year COVID uh, caused you to pivot like a lot of people did, right? And uh, you landed over in Germany. Uh, playing over in the uh, in, in the German Elite League Division Two, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, what was that like for you? How, how how was it? What was that experience like? It was definitely a lot different when you first get over there. It's just right away, your living is way different. Your bathroom's pretty small, like in not in my apartment, but in Zach's apartment, he had his his dish, dishwasher, his uh, his uh, laundry machine right next to his fridge in his kitchen. So that was just really different to see. And glamorous uh, pro life, right? <laughs> yeah, but they treat you really well over there. Like it's a very rich country, as you know. So right. your apartments are really nice. We both got separate SUVs, and the fans really love you as as players, and they truly like enjoy the club. They're not just fans that are just going to go watch a few games like it's their club and you're just a player playing for their club and they treat it like soccer almost so that was pretty cool to see even though they weren't really at the rink they would be outside the rink and they'd be messaging you and stuff but right it was different and then the the culture and the food and stuff and how much they they love like they love their beer almost like it's like a, a religion almost like you have to drink your beer in certain glasses and all this stuff so that was different to, to be a part of but we loved it there even though with with corona there was a lot of restrictions which which would hurt us a bit and we weren't able to see everything the country can offer but um no fans at the games there either right no yeah no fans at the games like at times you weren't allowed to leave i think 20 kilometers from your house and wow. we had a 9 p.m curfew and we had two different outbreaks of covid with the team so that stuff was tough but we were only 15 minutes from Munich, so I got to see some cool stuff around Munich and just how the European lifestyle works. But right. we have it so good here in Newfoundland. It was pretty hard not to come back when the Marlies offered us deals. But I think, um, you know, at some point I'd love to get back to Europe for sure. Good. So speaking of that, pal, what are what are you looking at, uh, you know, post-hockey? You know, like hockey's not going to last forever. Um, any plans about, you know, thoughts about what you'd like to do into the future once you wrap up your career? Yeah, I, I definitely think about it here and there for sure. I did uh, business and then specialized in finance with a lot of the guys that graduated my year. and I, I really liked that when I was at school, but now during your pro, pro hockey, you don't really have, you have a little bit of time on your hands certain days and then other days you don't at all. So mm. I said that I wanted to get a part job while playing but it's been kind of tough with our travel schedule and stuff sure. but, um you know my dad works with the with the federal government with a coa uh, so you know maybe something like that or mm-hmm. uh you know working in the finance industry i know guys like brent andrews matt mahalik have great jobs kind of Wilkinson and stuff so um yeah. Derek brickman that could be something i would look into when i'm done for sure but right now i don't i just want to keep playing as long as i can and just enjoy it 
Well, listen, buddy, I enjoyed having you as a UPI Panther and watching you play all those years. I'm thrilled that you're having all kinds of success in your pro career in your home province. Good luck to you, my friend. Uh, keep her going. And I hope the Growlers pull out another championship. <laughs> Thanks for being part of the segment, buddy, and uh, all the best in the future. Thanks, Norm. I'm really uh, happy to be here, and uh, it was great chatting with you again. All the best. Okay, buddy. All righty. Take care.